We are joined today on the Daily Signal podcast by Dr. Sebastian Gorka, the host of America First on the Salem Radio Network and the author of numerous books, the newest being The War for America's Soul. Dr. Gorka, thank you so much for being with us today. My pleasure. Always fun to be with anyone from Heritage. Well, we appreciate you being here. So I wanted to start out first by talking a little bit about your radio show, America First. I'm curious to kind of get an impression of what is your goal with the show? What is the audience you're trying to reach and sort of what do you want them to take from your program? That's a fabulous question, and it's one of the first things I sat down with my production team, and I, I asked them, and we just kind of uh, brainstormed about it when we, we launched two and a half years ago. Um, it, it, our mission is tied to what Mike Flynn called the peaceful revolution in politics that occurred in 2016. Uh, the fact that for the first time in the history of our republic, the American people chose a non-politician, not a retired general, but a complete outsider to become the president of the United States, a man who I had the honor of working for in the White House. People forget it, and I find it amusing that an immigrant to, the, to America like myself has to remind my fellow Americans that from George Washington to Barack Obama, every single president we've ever had has either been a former senator, congressman, governor, or a retired general like Eisenhower. For the first time ever, the American people said no. Uh, the system is broken on both left and right, and we need somebody who's not tarnished uh, who's not burdened by the special interests of the swamp to come in and try and fix things. And, and that for me is why, you know, you'll notice um, my, my, my radio show, my new TV show on Newsmax, I, I haven't gone the, the traditional route and called them the Sebastian Gorka show. It's not about me, it's about a mission. My radio show is called America First. Uh, my new Newsmax TV show is called the Gorka Reality Check. And, and our mission really is to to try and ride that wave of uh, political renewal, uh, peaceful reform, whereby we said America first is the way forward. Politics as, as a way of life has to change, and that's our mission, to, to bring us back really to what that beautiful line from the Bible that Ronald Reagan uh, leveraged for us almost 40 years ago to become once more that shining city on a hill. Absolutely, and I think that that's so fascinating that you mentioned it's to bring us back to those values. Now, one of the things that you mention in your book a lot is that there's this war on the soul of America, right, from the left, and there's this we need warriors to do it. And you've described yourself multiple times as a warrior, uh, specifically a culture warrior. What to you is the importance of fighting for our culture? And then secondly, what does a good culture warrior look like to you? Well, I, I've never described myself as a warrior, but I have called for, for the warrior spirit because we are in a spiritual battle for the survival of the Republic as our founding fathers envisioned it. So let me be very clear. If, if you want... I, I travel the world. I travel the world. I've traveled the United States. I give speeches to various audiences. Here we're going to have thousands of kids from across America, but it could be military audiences, could be more senior audiences. And I always, sooner or later, somebody asks me the same question. How did we get here? How did we get here to a point where uh, the, the recent YouGov poll found that 60% of millennials would prefer to live in a, a socialist or communist America? How do we get to a point where uh, schools are teaching critical race theory, uh, an ideology which states that uh, certain skin colors are, are always going to be oppressors, other skin colors are always going to be victims. And whenever I'm asked that question, I, I always answer this the, the same way. You don't want to know the answer to that question because the real answer is lying in the mirror. Uh, the, the conservative movement writ large allowed a, a, a small minority of radicals to take over the Democrat Party and also to radicalize every aspect of our culture except one. The only thing that belongs to conservatives today is talk radio, everything else, uh, Hollywood, uh, the media, the schools, academe has been radicalized. So what, what I'm calling for is truly an understanding that this is a cultural project. It's been going for at least 80 years. If you want to understand how the left achieved what they achieved, you, you can read my books, but, but a life-changing book that, that, that I recommend to everyone is Andrew Breitbart's Righteous, Righteous Indignation. His chapter six 
uh, is is the best expl explication in just a few pages of the the long march through the institutions, Antonio Gramsci, uh, the relevance of Saul Alinsky, how the Democrat Party, which was a reasonable party at one point in our history. I mean, JFK was a great patriot. He was a national security hawk. JFK wouldn't be allowed in the Democrat Party today. So Andrew Breitbart's book explains how the left was radicalized, and it really is that, that clarion call for how we need to take back the culture and understand that, that every, every single person listening to this podcast, every single member of Heritage, everybody who votes, I don't care whether you live in California or Massachusetts, you have a role to play in that culture war. And you don't have to be aggressive, you don't have to be you know, beating a, a drum. You just have to cleave to the truth. You know, when, when you have this radical transgender agenda, you just have to say, sorry guys, a, a man is a man and a woman is a woman because chromosomes are non-negotiable and if you deny that, you're the science denier. So we are in a culture war and everybody has a role to play. I think that's a fantastic point. And I'm really glad that you mentioned Andrew Breitbart's book because that was actually one of the most influential books when I was kind of going into my political philosophy. So uh, one of the quotes that I remember very specifically from that is, I was a liberal of convenience. Yes, I mean, this is the, the amazing, so I, I, to be honest, I don't have time or patience for biographies. I, you know, these massive 900 page books on you know, what Eisenhower had for breakfast on right. February the 12th, 90. I didn't, I'm not interested. But I've read two that changed my life on, on the recommendations of people I trust. One was Andrew Breitbart, and the second was Hillbilly Elegy by J.D. Vance, who's, who's, a, who's been a regular guest on, on my radio show, America First. But to, to, to your point, Breitbart's book is so. And God rest his soul, he, he left us far too soon. Breitbart's story is so powerful because he's utterly candid in the beginnings of the book where he says, I went to Tul Tulane University. I was a drunk al alcoholic liberal. And, and I, I thought what the mainstream media told me was the truth. And then there's that Damascene moment where the scales fall from his eyes as, you know, in, in, in a hungover stupor, he's watching the Clarence Thomas hearings and he sees this, this righteous black conservative judge who's been nominated to the Supreme Court, who looks absolutely perfect for the nomination, being lambasted in this quote-unquote high-tech lynching with fabricated accusations of sexual impropriety. And that's when, when Andrew realized if they're lying to me about this, a Supreme Court justice nomination, what else could they be lying to me about? And that's where his rebirth began and he became a crusader for the truth and, and a man who fought the bullies and the propagandists. So guys, J.D. Vance, Hillbill Elegy and Andrew Breitbart's right, Righteous Indignation, those are life-changing books. Totally agree with you. And it actually leads me to my next question of, we are here at a youth-directed conference. If the vast majority of Americans who are young are maybe just liberals of convenience, what is it up to us then to sort of pass this wow. message along? Wow, that's fabulous. So every single one of us ha has a specific role to play. Uh, mine, with my radio show, America First, with my, my TV show, The Gawker Reality Check, I, I've, I've, I, I think I've um, arrived at a place where I'm at peace with my mission, which is not to, to try and convince the, the indoctrinated. I think our side, those who already understand the import of the values upon which our republic were founded, Need, need to have have their spirits lifted, uh, need to have somebody help maintain their momentum. That's my job. But 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 for others, let me put it thusly. My 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 amazing colleague, I call him my rabbi, even though I'm a Catholic, um, Dennis Prager uh, on Salem Radio. He he has this line. He has many fabulous lines. But there's this one line where he says, "The world is made up of of three types of individual. There are the fighters." There are those who help the fighters, and there are those who do nothing and just stand by. All you need to do is to make sure you're not in the third category. Uh, we need, we, 
Lord knows we need more fighters. And if you have the wherewithal, if you have the spiritual fortitude, become one of those cultural warriors. But at the very least, if you can't, if you don't want to run for office or local school board member, then help somebody who is. Become someone who supports those who pick up the banner of, 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 of America first and fight to make America great again. And the, and the best thing you can do, how about this? How, how about, uh, if, you, if you permit me, a personal request to all of your listeners. Sure. Never ever allow yourself to be in a position where you censor your beliefs. Self in today's rabid, vituperative cancel culture, one of the most soul-destroying things an American can do is to acquiesce to political correctness, which is really just an, a, another word for censorship, by censoring yourself. Can I, can I give you one story to illustrate this? Please. So recently, my wife and I, um, Katie, who also works at Heritage, we were invited to address a, uh, a fabulous group of um, conservatives in, in, in Virginia. And the event was at the beautiful Trump golf course there, which I'd never been to. And if you haven't, check it out. I'm not a golfer, but a beautiful, beautiful uh, golf course. Uh, and I arrived to the ballroom. The room was filled with people in tuxedos and, and ball gowns. And as soon as I walked in, this woman came up to me and she said, Dr. Gorka, Dr. Gorka, I'm a big fan. Can I take a selfie? And, you know, of course, of course, exactly. what does it cost me? So we stopped. She took a selfie. And I said to her what I always say. And don't forget to tag me when you post it on Facebook or Instagram or whatever. And then suddenly her face just froze. And she said, Oh, I, I can't do that. I, I mean, things are so politicized where I live and, and my husband is self-employed and he has a company. And when she said that, something inside me died. And, and I thought to myself, and actually, without using her name, I, I, I brought her up in the speech I gave 40 minutes later to the assembled hundreds of people. And I said, <laughs> if you're not prepared to put your name and your face to the values you believe in. Well, what is your relationship to those values? And this phrase just burst in my mind. If you're not prepared to fight, you don't deserve to win. That's an example of self-censorship. She's excited about what I represent. She's excited about the values she thinks she shares with me, but she's not prepared to publicly embrace those values on social media well then what's her future what's her children's future what's the future of her grandchildren live your values is perhaps the greatest thing any american patriot can do right now well dr gorka that was a phenomenal story and unfortunately we are running a little low on time well you've got a lot of people to interview here <laughs> like it's a tar target rich environment this is a fantastic place to be um but my last question for you would be, I always like to leave the last note to the speaker to sort of discuss what they think is the most important thing for our listeners to take from this interview. So what do you believe, if our listeners took one thing from this, what should they take away and why? Well, uh, very clearly, America remains the greatest nation the world has ever seen. Uh, it is up to us to maintain it as such. And I would just say the following, we are living in exciting times for two reasons. Number one, the left is weak. It may not feel like that. When you're being censored on Facebook, when uh, a man with, uh, what was it, 80, 91 million followers is being deleted on, on Twitter, a sitting president, it may not feel like it. But those actions actually evince weakness. When you have to censor people, it means they're afraid. So number one, the left has built this uh, facade, this Potemkin village on, on, on sand. And secondly, America is waking up. I, I, I cannot tell you every single day there's another video, there's another viral post of not just parents but teachers pushing back on critical race theory, on the bigotry of school board members. So guys, now more than ever, take a stand, be loyal to the truth, get engaged, join the Heritage Foundation because we have a republic to save. And guess what? With you, we can do it.
Dr. Gorka, fantastic. Thank you so much. That was Dr. Sebastian Gorka for the Daily Signal podcast. Check check us out, uh, sebgorka.com, all the information. That's S-E-B-G-O-R-K-A, sebgorka.com.